Welcome into College Football Breakdown, where we bring Joe Lisi. Find him on Twitter, at GoForTheTwoIn. He killed it during the college football regular season, looking to kill it in the upcoming bowl season. Joe, welcome in. How are you doing today, buddy? Uh, this is what it's all about, Drew. 39 bowl games, two playoffs. We find out who the national champion is for 2017 in the next four weeks. Yes, we do. And, and one thing that won't decide the national championship, but it's good to bet on, fun to bet on. We got the New Orleans Bowl Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. North Texas versus Troy. Looks like Troy's laying six and a half. 62 the total at five dimes, 62 and a half. Pretty much everywhere else on SBR odds. How are you looking to bet this Conference USA versus Sunbelt matchup, Joe? Yeah, I break this game down. It's a very intriguing battle that Southern Miss beat uh, the Raging Cajuns last year in this ballgame, 28 to 21. So I really break down the conferences here, Conference USA versus the Sun Belt. And I'm going to surprise some people. I like North Texas here. North Texas, 9 and 4 this year. And two of their losses against SMU and Iowa came in the first month of the season. The other two losses came to conference champion FAU. I think when you look at North Texas overall, they're an explosive offense that's averaging 291 passing yards per game. They're also running the football for 176 yards on the ground, but I think they have the better quarterback in this ballgame in Mason Fine. He's a quarterback that completed 64% of his passes, over 3,700 uh, passing yards, 28 touchdowns, and he has a big play wide receiver core led by Guyton, Lawrence, and Busey that have combined for 146 receptions and 18 touchdowns and when you look at this North Texas team overall this is a team that did beat four bowl uh, teams on their resume they beat teams like Southern Miss UAB La Tech and Army so this is a solid team in North Texas that has an explosive offense when you look at Troy overall they did beat LSU this year and they did reel off six straight wins to end their year and they ended up at 10 and 2 overall but I think when you look at this matchup for Troy, you look at the last six games that they beat, those opponents had a combined overall record of 24 and 46 overall, or a 342 winning percentage. They beat those teams by 22.3 points per game. I think this is a better team in North Texas than people think. And I think North Texas is in striking distance Every step of the way, Mason Fine's ability to stretch Troy's defense vertically will put pressure on Brandon Silvers, and I think that's the difference. I'm calling for the upset. North Texas 34, Troy 30 in this ballgame. Joe, just to follow up for you, you know, North Texas, that mean green rushing defense has struggled against teams like Army and FAU. Do you think the, down, the downhill running attack with uh, Chubb there for Troy could cause them big problems and, uh, you know, possibly the mean green getting blown out. Well, here's the thing about Troy's offense over the last six weeks in terms of consistency with Jordan Chun. I mean, he does have 10 rushing touchdowns on the year, and Troy did rush for 150 yards on the season as a whole. But consistently from week to week over the last six weeks, it hasn't been a consistent rushing offense. And I think it is the up-tempo offense of North Texas that will bail out their defense in this ballgame. I think it'll put pressure on Troy to match them score for score. And I think that's where the advantage holds for the mean green in this ball game all right and for record keeping purposes joe is on north texas and we can give you a plus six and a half right now did you did you find any plus sevens out there joe no i, I like them at plus six and a half drew i think i think they're begging you to take troy in this matchup so i'll take the mean green plus the six and a half all right, Joe liking the mean green outright, but for record keeping purposes, UNT plus six and a half. On to the next game here, the Cure Bowl in Orlando, Florida, 203 204, the rotation number. We got Georgia State versus Western Kentucky. Looks like WKU laying six and a half, 52 the total, so a lower scoring game projected in this one. 230 Eastern kick on CBS Sports Network. Joe, are you continuing the fade on the Sunbelt Conference teams in this one? Well, yeah, I am, because when you look at Georgia State overall, they're 6-5 and five heading into this ball game, and you look at Western Kentucky, 6-6 six and six this year. Uh, not the same offense under former head coach Jeff Brown that led this team to back-to-back -back Conference USA champions, uh, championships over the last couple of years. But you look at Georgia State this year, from a road perspective, this team has played very well. They're 5-1 and one on the road this year, and their only loss did come in Happy Valley to Penn State. They got blown out in that ballgame. 
56 to nothing. But you look at those other five wins, those opponents uh, combined were 12 and 48 overall or a 200 winning percentage. When you look at Western Kentucky, they do have the better quarterback in this matchup, Mike White, that has completed 64% of his passes, over 3,700 passing yards, 24 touchdowns. This is a one dimensional offense at Western Kentucky. They're only rushing for 66 yards on the ground. They're passing for 333 through the air. And I think that's the difference heading into this ball game. The offense of Georgia State, not the same type of offense of Western Kentucky under Connor Manning. There are more, uh, I want to say, a methodical offense that's only averaging 19 points per game. But I look at Western Kentucky over the last three games of the year. They've gotten much better in run support. Over the last three games, they held opposing offenses to 134 rushing yards per game. I think that'll continue into this matchup. And you look at Western Kentucky this year, they were two and four on the road, but two of those uh, th those four losses did come against very solid competition. You're talking about Big Ten opponent, Illinois. You're also talking about SEC opponent, Vanderbilt, Marshall, and Florida International. So those were their four losses on the road. Solid teams and from Power Five conferences. So I think the better team and the more complete team heading into this ball game is Western Kentucky. But I will say this: I love Western Kentucky, and I also think it'll be a very high-scoring ball game. I like over 51 and a half for a couple of factors. You look at the strength of Georgia State's offense; they're averaging 270 passing yards per game, and the weakness of Georgia State's defense is in the secondary. They're allowing 242 passing yards to oppose opposing offenses. They're also negative six in turnover margin. And when you look at sack totals for both teams, Georgia State enters this matchup with only 18 total sacks. Western Kentucky only has 10 total sacks in this fall game. So I think both quarterbacks will have time to pick apart their opposing defense is secondary. That's why I like Western Kentucky with a better, more complete team in Mike White and a high scoring battle. I think Western Kentucky wins this ball game convincingly by 17 points or more, but I'm going on record with the Hilltoppers and the over in this ball game. Okay, so you want both, both Western Kentucky side and the over? Yep. All right, so he's going on record with two bets in one game, two separate bets, not a parlay. WKU minus six and a half in the over of 52 in the Cure Bowl for Joe Lisi. Joe, follow up to this. Out of the 39 bowl games, is the Georgia State Panthers resume the weakest out of any bowl team? I would have to say yes. When you break down those five games that I mentioned on the road, 12 and 48 overall or a 200 winning percentage, it doesn't get much worse than that. And when you look at Western Kentucky, even though they've underachieved this year under their head coach and Jeff Brom, this was a team that did win back-to-back -back Conference USA championships over the last couple of years. So from a recruiting aspect, you have to give the significant advantage to Western Kentucky in this ballgame. All right, on to Wednesday, December 20th, 213, 214 on the rotation number. We got Louisiana Tech versus SMU in the Frisco Bowl. It's 8 p.m. Eastern kick on ESPN. A total of 70 in SMU. The Mustangs lay in five. How are you looking to bet this one, Joe? Intriguing developments in this ball game, Drew. Uh, you look at SMU, Chad Morris did become the head coach at Arkansas. New head coach, Sonny Dykes, who was the former head coach at Cal, was named the head coach of the Mustangs. He's going to coach in this ball game, and I'm not so sure that's an added benefit for the Mustangs heading into this mat matchup. When you look at the offense for SMU, what can you say? They have a dynamic offense that's averaging 185 rushing yards per game. They're also passing for well over 300 yards heading into this matchup with their quarterback, Ben Hicks, that has thrown 32 touchdown passes this year. And he has two big play wide receivers in Cortland Sutland and Trey Quinn that have combined for over 140 receptions and 24 total touchdown receiving uh, passes, receptions on the year. But you look at this SMU defense overall, I mean, they're giving up well over 200 yards passing per game, right in the area of about 272 and two. 
213 rushing yards, two opposing offenses, and more importantly, on the road this year, SMU was 1-4 and four and lost those games by 14.2 points per game. When you look at the flip side with Louisiana Tech, they have a balanced offense. They're rushing for right out in the area of about 175 yards on the ground. They're passing for 231 through the air. And you look at their last three bowl appearances under their head coach, Skip Holtz. Uh, they've won the last three bowl games. Even though I'm not a big proponent of Skip Holtz, I think he's a solid coach, especially in bowl situations. And you have to give the edge to Louisiana Tech, not just offensively in terms of their ability to run the football between the tackles, but defensively as well. They're better in run support, holding opposing offenses to 170 yards on the ground and only giving up right in the area of about 231 passing yards per game. They're also plus seven in turnover margin. I think the more complete team heading into this ball game is Louisiana Tech. And when you break down their road performances this year, they were three and two this year on the road. Those two losses came to South Carolina and UAB by a total of two points. So this is a battle-tested team with the more complete team with their head coach. I like La Tech to get the upset. Give me the five points in this battle. Yeah, Joe, I, I mean, a follow-up to this one, you know, Sonny Dykes coming in, it, it, it makes it for kind of a tricky handicap because the new coach, is he implementing a new system? It's stuff to all take into research, but you bring it in, you know, is he a good coach? He, we got to remember what he did against uh, the team that he'll be playing, Louisiana Tech. That offense was was rolling when, when he was there in Ruston, and also he was the coach for uh, Jared Goff at Cal. So... The man can coach offense. Uh, do, do you see a lot of points in this and getting up and over 70? Well, here's the thing. I mean, that would be the conventional wisdom in this ball game. But the other factor that I throw away, it's not taken away from Sonny Dykes as a head coach because – Quite honestly, I didn't think he should have been fired in California, but you you look at his mentoring of these guys. I mean, part of the understanding and being a head coach is understanding how players respond in game situations and understanding the personnel and then being able to call a game plan around that personnel. And that's the one thing I think when you break this game down, even though Sonny Dykes has had great success at La Tech and California with the same type of offensive scheme, it's understanding the his personnel around him and being there in such a short period of time. That's why I like Skip Holtz in this type of atmosphere. I think he has the advantage over Sonny Dykes from a personnel perspective. Skip Holtz knows what he has. Sonny Dykes is going to be a feeling out process, in my opinion. All right, on to December 24th, Christmas Eve, Thursday, 8 p.m. kick, 215, 216 on the rotation. We got Temple versus FIU 56 the total looks like the Owls laying seven pretty much across the board on SBR odds right now we are showing a seven and a half at five dimes plus some juice so if you're looking to bet FIU five dimes might be the place to do it Joe I'll tell you this is an interesting matchup in my favorite named bowl we got the bad boy mowers Gasparilla bowl how are you looking to bet it yeah, I like Temple in this matchup for a couple of factors, Drew. They're 3-3 three and three on the road this year, but they were a much different team when their quarterback, freshman quarterback, Frank Newtile, took over. He completed 60% of his passes, 1,372 yards, 11 passing touchdowns. This is an offense in Temple that rushed for right in the area of about 140 yards per game and passed for 251 through the air. But over the last six games this year, they averaged 280 passing yards per game. I think from a physicality perspective in the interior on the offense and defense lines, Temple holds a significant advantage. Now, you can't argue with Florida International and their head coach, Butch Jones, uh, excuse me, Butch Davis, that got them back to a bowl game this year. They've over exceeded expectations. But I think a couple of factors why I like Temple as well. You look at uh, FIU in terms of run support. They're allowing 172 rushing yards to opposing offenses, and their weakness is in the 
secondary, giving up 245 passing yards to opposing quarterbacks. And you look at their road performances this year. They had three road losses. They lost those games very convincingly by an average margin of defeat of 23.6 points per game. When you look at Temple this year under new head coach Jeff Collins, he's a blue-collar coach that took over from Matt Rule. Temple did not play well last year in the bowl game against Wake Forest after Matt Rule took over the duties for Baylor. I think this is a critical game for Temple, more so than Florida International. And I like the way this team played down the stretch from a defensive perspective, especially in run support. The speed of Temple is the difference. I think they get a convincing 17-point or more victory against FIU in this ball game. All right, he's Joe Lisi. Find him on Twitter, at Go for the Two. To close it out, he's on Temple minus seven, Louisiana Tuck plus five, Western Kentucky minus six and a half, and the over 52, that's in the Cure Bowl, and also UNT North Texas plus six and a half. So, Joe, anything else before we close this out? No, also the over of uh, Western Kentucky. We got that over Western Kentucky, Georgia State. Uh, it's 51 and a half, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, 51 and a half on SBR ads right now. So he's Joe Lisi. Find him on Twitter at Go for the Two. We'll be back next week with another college football bowl betting preview. Hello, SBR YouTube followers. I am Jojo, and before you go, I want to let you know about our new college football contest. As we all know, bowl season is right around the corner. And to add to that excitement, we are announcing our 15K College Bowl Handicapping Showdown. We are going to be awarding amazing prizes, and members from all over the world can join in on the fun. Join our forum, follow us on social media, and remember to share and like this video. I've been your host, Jojo, and until next time, thanks for watching.